picture yourself driving down, driving down the road in your dream car. A beautiful machine, gorgeous body of a vehicle, inside mechanics allow the vehicle to do whatever you can imagine on the road. Now, I want you to picture yourself in another way. Picture yourself born into the perfect body of an athlete. You can do anything. Now, the only difference is having that dream car that you got to take care of. Well, same thing applies to having that nice body. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk just briefly about how healthy food can get you to have that, that dream body of yours. Good afternoon, my name is Gunnar Sergeant Roberts. I'm going to speak briefly, as I mentioned, about balanced nutrition, balanced meals, and how you can get that, get that, that perfect that body that, uh, of an athlete. Now, what drives that difference? Well, I'm going to tell you, like I said, balanced meals is what drives the difference. Specifically, being able to maintain the body. Before you go out there and you buy that vehicle, whatever, it's going to be a Jaguar or a Porsche or 67 GTO in mint condition, or whatever it happens to be that you like, you're going to do some research on it before you buy it because you want to know what, what, what it takes care of. Gas, oil, how much money you're going to cost, and maintenance fees, and whatnot. Well, your body is no different than that. You need to be able to know exactly how to take care of it. And the six, there's six ways you can do that. And those six essential nutrients, which we have, are fats, proteins, carbs, water, vitamins, and minerals. And we'll talk briefly a little bit about each one. Fats. Well, fats make up about 60% of your energy when you're at night when you're sleeping to fix your body. It also helps your skin, your hair. It nourishes your body. It's in it also in every cell of your body. And in fact, it also provides as a shock absorption for vital organs in your body. Proteins. Proteins we hear is the building block of life. Okay? What I, I like to I have a little analogy about proteins. Anybody played with Legos before? You go to the store, you buy some Legos, you come back and they're different colors. What's on the box, you might not be able to build, but you can build all sorts of other things with those Legos. Proteins are the same way. You build it, you buy a square box, you bring it home, you can build tons of different things. And that's what it is for your body. Those proteins become amino acids, which you can build into different types of ones. And those different colored Legos are the different types of amino acids. If you're missing some of them, then you can't build what you need it to. Because protein's purpose is growth and maintenance. So just think of the Legos. Carbohydrates. This is your primary source of energy. Though fat and protein are also considered energy, carbohydrate is specific because it comes in the form of what's called glucose. And this is what your brain and nerves needs. This is the whole fuel system for your brain and nerves. Glucose. Your brain's very sensitive to glucose levels. If you've eaten too much of a big meal, you get very tired and fatigued because your body's telling you to shut everything down so it can digest that heavy meal. If you don't eat enough carbohydrates, you don't get enough glucose, then your body's going to get run down because just like that nice car, you can only drive so far on fumes. Eventually, you'll crash and burn. Water. Water is the most important nutrient. It's essential. It makes up 60% 60, 60 about two-thirds of your actual body weight. It's in every cell in your body. It acts as a lubricant to transport nutrients throughout your body as well as to get waste out of it. Additionally, it helps to regulate your body's temperature. And lastly, we talk about vitamins and minerals. Your body has all sorts of functions, just like that car has functions that it has to do. But the car it has computers, it has wires that are telling it what to do. Imagine one of those wires that wouldn't do anything unless a signal went to it. Well, this is where vitamins come from. Vitamins are, gonna, are what they call like coenzymes. They allow your body to react. Without a specific vitamin, it's not going to happen. I'll give you an example. Calcium. Calcium is a very important vitamin because it allows nerve impulses to react. So every time you have something that happen in your brain, just moving your hand, looking across the room, those are all stimulated and continue to react by nerve impulses. And calcium is the single item that allows it to start and stop. Without calcium, those nerve impulses don't work real well. Vitamins. Vitamins are, vitamins are also very important as we're not vitamins, minerals, because they play an important role. We'll talk a little bit about 
the vitamin uh, folate. Folate, for example, helps in red, 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 the growth of red blood cells. So if you don't have enough of it, then you can't, you're going to have problems with clotting. You're going to have problems regulating your, your body's health and transporting oxygen throughout your body and other deficiencies. Now we talked a little bit about the nutrition and how it plays into the maintenance of the body. We can kind of understand how we need to eat certain foods to get enough of that. We'll talk about how about it's one hand washes the other. Think about that car analogy. All right. More specifically, you can even think about a small engine, a two-cycle engine that has a proper ratio of oil and gasoline. In a two-stroke engine, you need to make sure that you're eating the right amount of proteins, carbs, and fats at every single meal. If you just eat carbohydrates, you can eat them all day long until you get tired can't eat anymore. Thanksgiving is a perfect, perfect example of that. You don't never eat too much turkey because you eat way too much carbohydrates. Now, if you eat too much protein, then you're just going to get fat and bloated. And fat, well, it's just nasty if you eat too much of it. So it has to be a balance of it. Ideally, you want to buy, you want to be able to have that food so that way your protein is no more than the palm of your hand. When you picture your plate, I want you to picture that palm of your hand of protein, and then two-thirds of the plate is going to be filled up with carbohydrates, lean, fr fr fresh fruits, and vegetables. That's that good gasoline we want to put into our vehicle, and then a little bit of fat to help lubricate it going through the lungs. Now, we understand if you have a car, you want to be able to have good energy going in. And we've all, we've all heard of a Prius before. It's energy saving cars, but nobody really wants to drive those. We want to drive those big vehicles. Well, if you've got a big vehicle, then it's going to take a lot of energy. It's going to take a lot of gasoline. It's going to go through a lot of gasoline fast like a, a Dodge or a, a big Chevy truck that is meant for hauling, all right? So it's going to have low gas mileage because it's constantly putting out lots of energy. Well, a muscular individual who works out, does a lot of manual labor, is going to put out a lot of energy as well. But that doesn't mean he needs more food. He needs food spread out throughout the day, but balanced meals, just like we talked about, protein, fats, and carbs. An example would be getting a four ounce, a little four ounce piece of chicken, maybe about a cup and a half of broccoli and other, some other steamed vegetables, and then an apple. This would be a perfectly balanced meal. You could even cook the uh, chicken, maybe a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, getting a good source of fat. Now that we understand about types of food to eat and how to get the balance, the hard part is understanding shopping for balance. When you go to the grocery store, you don't want to just go there and buy any types of food, all right? We go there hungry. Well, hungry is defined by the free dictionary online as a physical, physiological need for food. This is our body, or in a, like the uh, car, the little computers, when you turn it on, the lights go on, and it tells you all the different things that might be wrong with your vehicle. It's the same thing. Your body's telling you you're running low on gas, or you need to check your engine, all right? That's what hunger is. Now, appetite is a little bit different. Appetite is the physical desire for food. Now, we can relate this as well as anybody ever detailed a car out before? You go to the store, you get, you get that brand new dream car that we talked about earlier, and then you want to detail it. You want to get all sorts of things to add on to your vehicle to make it look nicer. But realistically, it's kind of a waste of money because you bought your dream car, and as is, it should, shouldn't be good enough. So if you go in a store and spend all sorts of money, it's like you're feeding your appetite. You're not getting what you need. You now see the, the analogy how we tie it in. Now, in order to prevent yourself from getting 